Yo, yo, what's poppin'? All my peeps is I, your host of the most renaissance man who always thinks he can and your champion of the peeps, Patty Pitts. Back once again in the yard of streams for another edition of Pitts and Sarah's Wrestling Show, the Raw Rewind Edition. Obviously, we're taking no nights off because Raw goes off at 11. And, you know, I'm Royal Ramblin' here because you can't be talking about the best. You can't be talking about Pitts and Sarah's Wrestling Show without the best of the West. You can't forget about Sarah Marshall. What's popping, girl? Hey, yo. I feel like that was more fitting today for you. Like, he was like, okay. Finish yeah, like up. finish up. Yeah, like come on, finish Let me up get here. out my line. Let me do my gimmick. I just know? have been it's all systems go. I just feel like I've been on all day. I'm literally getting texts from everywhere. People ask me for things, things from the sea, and I'm just like, I can't do it. All right. I even try to rewatch Raw for the second time, skip through it to hit up, you know, the banners that we have. And uh I I just couldn't even get through a match without someone texting me about something so my stream went out before the main event so i missed <laughs> i missed the main event um all that i fell asleep during the main event yeah was, so, it was that was tough so yeah so it was before no actually it was i didn't even i didn't get to see jay versus finn either um so Ooh. it went out before that yeah the the stream that i had the person's uh electricity went out that is so tragic. So that is uh, tragic. Yeah. Um. So oh, yeah, man. I had to catch it when it showed here. Um. So That's I saw. Good. I mean, I had already looked to see what happened because I was like, I can't not. I've been, you know, two and a half hours invested into the show. So oh, yeah. No, you gotta um, know what's, find out what's going on. Yeah. And but, God damn, did they deliver again? Like it just is refreshing. It really is every week, and. Uh, it just every week we talk about this how it's oh it's newer and all this. but like apparently people are sick of that by the way yeah they can go sit on <laughs> it and spin okay that's what i say because i can't i can't deal with those people who are never happy like that and i mean just i i don't want to go all all in it right now because we do have to say what's up to the peeps in the comment section but god damn sarah like staying home on mondays no matter what age I was, to watch Raw Live was always a struggle because one school, and then two, it's like, you know what? I'll catch a DVR. I'm not talking about it with anyone at the lunch table anyways, so I'll watch it by myself after school. But now, like, people are asking me about things, you know, when I, and I said it, I think, on Sunday. Um, but even at work, you know, people are asking me, like, all right, so who is this guy? You know, because there's a Gunther's theme song. Mm. Is um is actually I know you know this, but maybe the peeps don't. It, it's a famous you know classical song, the start of it at least before Death Rebel threw their own little shit on it. And I listen to it every morning, uh, right before I start doing my lists and stuff for the orders for the day. And he listened to it too, and I was talking about Gunther, and then he's interested in it now. So it's just like nice to have that wanting to watch and then go spread the good news essentially. And it's 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 such an interesting debate, I guess, I think, too, because so many people are like, oh, professional wrestling is cool again or blah, blah, blah. And The Rock is crediting himself for that. I don't think it was The Rock, though. I think that like WWE has been hot before The Rock came around, you know, earlier this it year. Was. And so I think we're getting back to that time that. I mean, and I only speak of it because it's the most relevant time or the most recent time that I would say that people were kind of like universally invested in wrestling. And that was the Attitude Era where people mm. were paying attention and the top stars in the company were stars beyond just the ring. You know what I yeah. mean? Like people knew who The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H and whoever, like everyone knew who they were. And I kind of feel like we're getting back to that point where it's not really embarrassing or you don't feel embarrassed. Yeah, I know what you mean. To say that you watch wrestling, you know, oh, like man. I think we all still have that just because it's not because you're embarrassed about it necessarily, it's but it's because of the reaction that you get from people. Um, 
And I feel like we're at a point where it's like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, you watch wrestling. That's cool. It. Like, I yeah. just saw that so and so it was there. Or this happened. And, yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that it's 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 pretty cool that we're getting back to that point because uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. The only thing I I will add before we say what's up to the peeps is that you are right. The Rock didn't make it cool again because the wrestling people like you and I and everyone else were seeing that it was cool from who they had anyways. The Rock made it cool for the people that don't watch. like For the know, casual fan that maybe like grew up a wrestling fan and then stopped watching or the people yeah. who are the Rock is an actor so they're a fan of Dwayne Johnson. Like, yeah. Yeah, I th it's just it. It feels kind of reminiscent, and I'm not saying it's the same, but like of the Bella Twins saying that they started the women's revolution. Like, girl, bye. It's like kind of like no, you are a piece of it. You know what I mean? But like with the Rock, yes. like, you were a piece of it. You weren't the leading force. Mm -hmm. You know, um, obviously Agreed. the Rock, but when she led the Bellas, I'm not saying that, but it just felt similar because it's like no, Rock, you came in at that time probably because it already was hot you know what i mean there's a reason why then the pivot happened because the the company has been so hot over the last like two years that they didn't mm. want to see you in the main event imagine exactly. that if this were not a, like if people did not care about wrestling or weren't invested in it or whatever nobody would have been trying to say we don't want the rock we want cody Rhodes. that would not be happening so yeah, everywhere What's going on with the peeps here? What's uh what's up, unhinged main event, bro? Uh rainy days. How about that Sami Zayn entrance? Damn right. That's how I want into the garden one day. Uh <laughs> Jay, uh, I'm pretty sure he did talk about the bloodline, just a mm -hmm. heads up. Uh, and he said that he's Jimmy, like come to me or something. It was a well, quote he on said, he said I tried to get him to come with me. But, okay. you know, it's like it is what it is. They're trying to introduce new members that no one even knows who they are, blah, blah, blah. But he was just basically like, I don't care. Like, I'm focused on my match, whatever, which I think was the right way to approach it. Because if they are going to eventually have them reunite and maybe it'll be the Usos and Roman as like the, the baby face faction of the bloodline, I yeah. think it's good to start off this way where Jay either is like kind of it telling you how he feels about it but like ah, i don't care because if you just jump straight into him being like come on jimmy come back over here it's like that's kind of a lame way Very lame. to go about it especially if roman really doesn't come back until august because then why are we doing this in april a lot of time to fill yeah Way too much time to fill there bernard was popping my dude oh my he's been in here a little bit love hey that. hey love seeing that we got d squared david squared um and then we got uh jay special event you think of where civil war faction makes sense feels all the factions setting internal conflict um um like nwo wolf pack and other but like that, yeah, that, it's that's more just that's, that's a, I that feel like the problem thing. that we've talked about before is that there are a lot of factions being created i think it's like that's cool and it's not at the same time <laughs> because it feels like you're just trying to get as many people on tv as possible and that's why you're creating factions but then you're not necessarily utilizing them in the right way we've even said that about judgment day um where it was like what are we doing like what is going on here i feel like as of right now the only one that makes sense is the bloodline because that's what it looks like right now i think there is a potential for a judgment day internal conflict but again that's like not what you're asking um otherwise there's not really factions beefing which that would be cool to have that but i don't really see that happening right now i mean i remember like the new age outlaws took on x Pac and d like dx had some internal ones early in their careers uh or early in the 2000s i mean um nexus became became the core that was like weird so like there's been weird ones the core with two r's by the way with two r's yeah core you know uh so uh this is a unique one and one that you know they're gonna they're gonna do right now out the park um so with that being said sarah what what what's popping what do we want to start the show with uh rhea ripley uh, the news started spreading before the show even began that Rhea had allegedly suffered an injury. 
during the week before. And so everyone was like, what happened? Though she was only out there talking and then had that little spat with Liv in the back. And apparently that is when the unfortunate accident happened to injure her shoulder when she was thrown into the wall apparently separated her shoulder which i'm like every time someone is announced to have separated their shoulder i completely understand the pain they're going through because i have done that i have subluxating shoulders so you in, told me this shit's crazy this yeah so crazy. in certain if i have my arms in like certain positions or whatever like my shoulder will just pop out of socket and um depending on what i'm doing i can just immediately just like fix it but one time I it's a weird story, but I was like my my nephew was young and I was like trying to be funny and like make him laugh or whatever. And I like ran and like belly flopped on an ottoman <laughs> and um, my shoulder popped out of socket and was out of socket for like a good 10 seconds. And I was just like laying there in so much pain and it was weeks until my shoulder didn't feel like that's so tough. painful. So obviously that's just from me. You know, my own actions. That's just me. Just leading to, well, I mean, it's like I broke my foot doing literally nothing. I turned around on my tippy toes and I broke a bone in my foot. So it's like I have, yeah, there's something. You're, you're a gentle soul. Apparently. We're, we're hearing. Um, <laughs> so unfortunately, Rhea had to come out and start the show to vacate her championship because of that shoulder. And it's ranging from four to six weeks as a possibility for her to come back up to three months. Obviously, it depends. Others who have had separated shoulders were out way longer than three months. So it really just depends on the severity of her injury, mm -hmm. which I would assume I would like to believe isn't too bad, just given the circumstances of how it happens. She wasn't in the ring. She didn't then continue on in a match. It was just like a fluky thing. You were thrown up against a wall the right way or the wrong way, however you want to look at it. And it separated her shoulder. So it just sucked. I think it was just like a universal reaction where people were just like really really like the timing couldn't be worse i think it could not be worse because that that mania match and the high that she was riding heading into this i would say new season mm -hmm. is that it was so good and the the possibilities were endless and it's just when i saw her come out usually when uh, superstar has to vacate the title they they put on a face you know what mm -hmm. i mean they put on a face for the crowd and they try to say it's, we're gonna be we're gonna get through this together and not with Rhea. uh Rhea was that was one of the most stone cold i don't say evil because it's not the right word but angry She's pissed off, pissed yeah. off. there yeah. it is committed yeah and you know you could see that in her face when she came out and even when she started talking, I mean, for when she goes, um, I guess you've already heard the news, like all that, like she's cutting right to the chase, you know, she's not trying to build it up or anything like that. And then going right into, you know, the live thing, I thought it was just a good way to kind of let that anger mm -hmm. out where if it's gay favor or not, you know, you got to let that aggression out somehow. and. and I think it's a great way not only to do that, but now you already have a, a feud implemented as soon as she comes back. So yeah. even though she's gone for a bit, you, you, she knows what she's doing when she gets 100% healthy again. I think this was almost like it, it's one of those situations where it ended up working out in someone's favor. You know, like what we said about the CM Punk injury um, at Royal Rumble, it ended up working out for the better for the storyline between like Drew and Seth and whatever for the world heavyweight title at Mania. This is like the best case scenario, I would say, for Liv because I think, uh, you know, they haven't known how to book her basically since she lost the championship, which is ridiculous. Um, because it was such a big moment for her to have won money in the bank to have beaten ronda rousey and then she just went on this like boring ish title run and they didn't do anything with her then she's gone you know she's been injured like a couple times since then and she was just gone for six months and they bring her back and it's like okay the vision is clear but they were also kind of trying to make her a baby face and it's like you kind of can't be a baby face against Rhea because she's on the teeter-totter she's a tweener exactly. she's both she's and really we is. 
that was the epitome of what we saw last night. It was a double turn, basically, because Rhea's out there. And everyone is so supportive of her. They're so sad to see her go. But you shouldn't be, right? Because she's the like leader of the Judgment Day. You're supposed to hate her. And then you have Liv come out to celebrate <laughs> and like gloat. Hey, ha, ha, ha. Time. Like, look what happened to you. Karma is a B, you know? And they were booing the crap out of her. So it was like, then we see her get the, 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 the turn. So it was like... I think that this is going to, in the long run, be so beneficial to live. And it's going to be interesting to see how they go about it when Rhea returns. Because Judgment Day is not supposed to be liked right now. But no, if she returns not. and she's supposed to be feuding with a heel Liv Morgan, then you kind of can't bring her back as a heel. No, no. but then again, it's, she throws that line. Out, which a lot of what she's doing is very similar to Drew. And his, you know, revenge tour and whatnot and mm -hmm. glory. And what I see with with Liv in this, and I refer referencing, I mean, um, the backstage interview that she had, I mean, she raised some valid points. Yeah. And this is why, and, and this kind of led to this hashtag being on Twitter and me being uh, not on mommy's side on this because... I'm all about this. I'm all about Liv having her own little revenge tour because Rhea put her on the shelf for eight months. You know, if we're gonna let's let's go more in front of the curtain. Uh, Rhea took her out for eight months. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then for Liv to come back and you know do this, it's you know great way to not only throw her up in the ranks and throw her up in a championship picture. Give her a little bit of a run. And then when she comes back, Rhea comes back, you have them feud. And then Rhea can just take over where she left off. And yeah. Liv Morgan got a little run. Maybe they do a little trilogy of sorts. And Liv picks up the first one. Mommy picks up the second. And, you know, you could do stuff like that where, you know, it's not like it's the worst thing in the world and it's going to kill Rhea and, you know, she's not going to go back to the status that she was. No, this actually is a, a good thing and a blessing in disguise. Let me let's say that. It's a blessing in disguise because it's not only going to work out for Liv to get that reign that she deserves, but in the long run, I mean, could you imagine that feud now that Rhea and Liv are going to have when she comes back? Yeah, I think that's going to be good. And I think this is kind of the, the way it should have gone because I know that people are like, oh, Liv should have had the Mania match with Rhea instead of Becky. I wasn't sure that I necessarily agreed just because yeah. Liv had been on for so long and people had been wanting to see Becky versus Rhea. But I feel like this is this makes more sense for them. Like this is a good base of their feud like on like we're, we've already saw the foundation because of Liv's anger about being put on the shelf but now this is just like adding more and more and more so it's just going to be so much easier and i think this is the way that they should go about trying to make Liv a hated heel oh my god like, absolutely it's so easy it usually is easy historically it's been easy to make someone a heel when they took someone out that everyone loved i mean look at Drew McIntyre like Oh my God. Why do you think? I mean, other than the fact that he's doing fantastic work, it's like it was like handing him a gold bar by being like, okay, Punk's injured. Now use that, you know? And it's like, Go okay, that's it. easy for people to hate him. So um, I would say, as far as whose side I'm on, I'm like, I don't, I'm not on a side. I, 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 I don't. You're not playing the game. No, because I like gonna... them both. And so I'm just happy that this is like, this has the potential to be a really good storyline right now all the way for however long that Rhea's out until Rhea comes back and then they kick it off. Like, that makes me happy because, you know, when it comes to the women's division especially, when something like this happens and we see it, unfortunately, way too often with them having to vacate titles, there's no plan in place beforehand. Like, even when they mm -hmm. know that someone's going to vacate, there's nothing happening when they're gone. There's no plans for when they're back. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to go about this in a different way and then we found out instead of having some sort of tournament or whatever that they're basically going to be awarding a new champion next week on raw so we don't know how they're going to go about it hopefully it's not about a royal let's hope that um imagine if it's just a slap in the face like a black battle royal 
I would like to believe it's going to be like a triple threat or like a fatal four way or something. Like they're just going to take like the four. But yeah. the thing, I don't think it's going to be two on two. Only, you mean no, no, two? no, 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 no. Two fatal fours or two triple threats. And then the winners oh. will face in the main event. Maybe. Yeah. Um, we know. But I, I'm like, I was thinking about it because people are saying like, okay, who should be the champion in the meantime? Because there's quite a few different ways that you can go about it. So the assumption is Rhea didn't lose the title. So you don't, you, you believe that whenever she's able to come back, that they're going to want to give her the title back, like not necessarily right away, but fairly quickly because she didn't lose the championship. In fact, she actually just put on a really good match with Becky at WrestleMania, and a week later, she had to vacate it. So um, if we're keeping Rhea tied to this, and there's a lot of girls that could be in there. We could have Liv Morgan, who feels like the easiest and like most predictable. But she's got a history with Nia Jax. She's got a history with Becky Lynch, who is not taking time off, which she clarified because she will be in Europe <laughs> on this next tour. Um but then there's other people that are in the back, too, that it's like, okay, well, what if they threw us a wild card? Like, what if they're trying to legitimize a girl? What if they want to, uh, you know, make them have another heel champion? So that's why they give it to, to Naya. What if they want to put it on someone like Natalia? People are throwing that out there just to, like, wow. the boats. You know what I mean? Um, I haven't heard Natalia. I did. I saw some people say that. But in my okay. eyes, I feel like... Yeah, the top three, it has to be Becky, Naya, or Liv. But to me, I feel like Liv just makes the most sense. It's, and there's more storyline there. If it's only Raw people, I assume it's only Raw. And that's what the reason why they're yeah. trying to name the champion next week is because the draft is like on Friday. Um, it's this Friday? I believe so, isn't it? The 26th? Next Friday. Next I, I'm Friday. talking about next Friday. Yeah. Ah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So I would say. I mean, I yeah, I feel like it's got to be live, right? It's only live. I, I, we, it, we are. It's only live. Okay, I can't see them doing any other other way because it just doesn't make sense. I, I seeing a lot of people want Shayna, and that's great. She does deserve it, but you got to remember she's got Zoe Stark with her, and they need to mm -hmm. do something with the women's tag division, which they looks like they're doing something uh, with them and that division, mm -hmm. getting them up and whatnot. So it's not her. N Natalia is great, and and I love the people showing love that she does deserve some sort of championship run. But maybe in NXT, not right now. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I just you need you need to it needs to be live. It, there's no other way to me. So I'm going. I'm going live. Please. Yeah, because I'm I'm looking at the comments too, and I'm like trying to think. Like I just don't know what other direction they would go in because those are like the main girls that are on raw right now that i mean and if people don't love the live answer okay well she might only be a short-term champion like maybe that is a way for you to get behind it because it's like okay and then it's an easy way for Rhea to come back and then she has an automatic feud there and it would be easy for people to get behind her especially if live is a heel um i i think yeah that's the answer right now but it's kind of it's just hard it's hard. The raw, the women's raw roster is not super deep, so it's that not. also makes it difficult. Because if this were SmackDown, we would be talking to like this person, this person, this person, this person. But on Raw, it's like mm. I did see something. It was uh, the Batman GIF of you know him seeing the bat signal, mm -hmm. and someone tweeted that GIF, and the caption was Charlotte Flair when she sees a vacant women's title, and I oh, for real, was though. in. I was in tears. I if, thought that was so funny. If she was on Raw, then yeah. Um, oh, she'd be there next week. She's she's the surprise entrant in the Battle Royal. What The draft's coming up. Yeah. I, no, I just, <laughs> she's it's like the girl. last person that needs to be a champion right now. And the thing is, is then it's just like, I feel like it would just be such an easy way for people to hate her more because then it's like, oh, wow, you're like an eight millionth time champion. And how many of them were you handed? Like, it's just not impressive, but whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, do you want to get to some comments? Shayna could be a dark horse, Dickie. I don't I don't mind that. Yeah. Liv or Naya, uh, SmackDown is loaded with Yeah, that's why I said I wanted Jade on Raw. I mean, I understand fun. why, 
they put Jade on SmackDown for mania purposes. But beyond that, I don't think it was like the wisest decision. But well, Vinny, let us educate you on how she got hurt. Uh, she was thrown she... into a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, so walls, walls sometimes are made of concrete or brick, and it's hard. And it also sometimes... doesn't take that much. I told you, I got I threw myself on an ottoman. Yeah, and like, my shoulder popped out. Um, I tore what was it? My shoulder. I tore something here. I don't know what it was because whatever. Um, had to go to physical therapy. All I did was move a table, and it, it was a um backyard table like stone and big and mm-hmm. um and it tore part of my um not rotator cuff maybe a rotator cuff but it's something similar like that so like freak things happen and we're just saying these as civil you know part of the regular people we're just normal people mm-hmm. and that happened you know so for them to do that like free things happen um and it wasn't on purpose let me get to some more here um oh dickie agreeing with me that um we could see i love that mm-hmm. she's my favorite too Vinny. i love Liv morgan um and then okay more comments there all right moving on oh well i, I do want to show some love to where is where is it yeah me too aston um i was very upset for ria it yeah this should have happened but ooh, one day yeah, One eventually. Day. I don't think they're going to move her to Raw. I mean, it would be fine if they did. Um, then she could be with her boyfriends. But uh, the new champion is being crowned before the, the draft. So True. technically she's not eligible for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So then we move on to Sheamus returns after being gone for eight months. And boy was looking thick. Thickums. He but was a, a good thick, thick boy with two C's. He was being a thick boy. It's funny because that was like the dominant conversation talking about Seamus returning. And I think he didn't help himself because it was like he came back, wasn't in his typical shape, which is fine. But then he wore the shorts. So that was like drawing attention to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he didn't come out how people remember him. So I was, it's like everyone was like, oh, he's thick. And people are floating the idea that he's like bulking right now. And we'll see the cut soon. I'm like, but doesn't that not make sense? Like, wouldn't you want to wait until you, you cut bulk. it? No, yeah, you bulk in, in the winter. Well, and, and but but even if you were doing it just for a show, like, wouldn't you want to wait until you cut to come back? Like, I just think that, like, yeah, he's older. He was injured and probably couldn't work out the same. Some people were saying he couldn't take the same stuff as he had normally did i don't know that's just what oh. people were saying. i just was like people are going way too in i was like i just noticed he was a thick boy and this was a meaty man meaty men match okay? it was a very meaty men match especially when you have ivar i know uh, and ivar and- liked some of my tweets he liked, he liked tweets awesome he likes us yeah and samantha irvin followed me um yeah i'm jealous of that shout out samantha irvin well know, deserved our last YouTube shorts is about how Samantha is the bomb. So, like, I just thought that was funny because I mean, maybe she checked you out. And was like, oh, she. No, okay. I know why she followed me. Um, someone, someone was talking to me, and then they tagged her, and they were like, "What do you think of Samantha?" And they tagged her, and they're like, "Do you think that she's the greatest ever? Like, even better than the Fink?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I love Samantha. I think that she's definitely well on her way to being the greatest ever." And so I think that's why she well followed on her me. Way. Um. But anyway, back to Seamus. So Seamus returned after being gone for eight months. And it's funny because they put him on Raw, but he had limes, been on SmackDown, I'm pretty too sure. Too many limes. Was that the song oh. that they were playing? Yeah, it was. Okay, so here, okay. Was it the beginning and then they played yes, like the, yes. the new beginning and then they put that? Oh, yes, I didn't even, I, didn't even I missed it until I was like tuning it. I was like on my phone or, you know, whatever. And I heard that and I go, wait, are they playing that right now? Immediately to Twitter. And see everyone go too many limes. <laughs> it was just like too many limes. It Isn't like, it too many lies? <laughs> okay, I was like, why are we talking it, about limes? Like concrete jungle, wet dream tomato. No, I no idea what you're talking no, about. Empire State of Mind. You know how like if you hear a song, or you're listening to the lyrics of a song, when you make people... up words because you don't know the real words, and then you learn the real ones. But people think it's something. Oh else yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 
Like I'm blue, if I were green, I would die. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's that- like it's very clear that it's Daba D. But anyway, um, exactly. so lines is back. Yeah, so we see Seamus. He's taking on Ivar, which you know that was cool. Not it, uh, kind of an interesting choice for him to be like a jobber, basically, uh, to make Seamus yeah. look good in his return. But I'm assuming that the reason why they chose Ivar is because he's also a big meaty man, and they wanted to make Seamus look strong. Like, hey, look at this guy, like doing an avalanche. Um, white noise white noise <laughs> and it's a guy it. that's 300 and something pounds i'm sure that's why um and of course he wins because why yeah. wouldn't he he got a strong ovation too so that's cool i just am i i guess my main thing is like some people were thinking he was going to be involved in the intercontinental title picture which that's not looking like it at least not right now but i'm just wondering what are they going to do with him because it's kind of like an awkward time where you know it's after wrestlemania so you don't have to worry about being pushed to the side because you're, you're you know you're just returning a couple weeks before mania so you're not in the plans yet but there's still backlash so that's going to kind of typically historically it has been to tie up those loose ends resulting still from mania so mm. i'm just curious like what are they going to do with sheamus this time around i think he'll float in with like that mcintyre like mm. that type of crowd right now and then, I mean, you have him with Ivar. Like, he'll he'll be an upper mid-card guy that just is used to have good matches and push guys. Like, I just don't see him in a massive role right now, especially just going back from injury. They're going and international. Injury at that. And a neck injury, which is, I mean, even more serious. So, to me, it seems like they're going to just have him be, like, that upper mid-card and just be part of the international tour. And they probably will have him eventually in the uh, intercontinental title picture because it is the only uh, championship that has evaded him in his career. So I'm yeah, I'm he'll sure have he'll... to win that before he retires. Oh yeah, so I'm sure we'll get there eventually. But clearly, they're doing something else with that right now. So, um, and then speaking of titles. We got new world tag team championships. So we kind of were just Thanks talking God. about this like a week or two ago. I don't even remember. We were saying uh that they needed new designs for the titles and if they really were going to split them at mania like we predicted they were going to and then they did they needed to get new designs for both of them and i think it was you that suggested okay what about if the ones on monday or whatever were the world and the other ones are the wwe so we got that we are sticking with the world's titles on raw we're so good um, we're so good so they presented our truth and miz with their new tag titles and i i was so conflicted about how i felt about them like i'm glad that the giant ugly pennies are gone i'm glad that the silver is gone because i always hated when they were like we want the gold and it's like you have silver like it's mm. and they're just so ugly um so i'm glad that they brought the gold back i just think i hate the shape because they maintained the giant circle shape of the new title of i the like new the ones. circle and I'm like, you know, they'll probably grow on me just like I didn't love, you know, other new titles that they've introduced over the years. But I'm just glad that they did it, honestly. I'm very very happy that they did it. It was so overdue Mm -hmm. at this point. And they needed they need to do something with it. I like how they kept that logo. There is Mm -hmm. that WWE logo there. It's small. And then they have in red you know the world tag team champions Uh, it's a nice design and it just it looks cleaner than the other ones you know and you're in a new era and right now you figure i mean you're in a new era and you've done pretty much 80 percent, 85 percent of the work to fully get you there Mm -hmm. the tag team titles were a huge huge problem um that you need to solve before you could say that you're fully in a new era they were ugly people just kept thinking about the old era and keep kept having that in and now that you have these new new championships it does feel like they feel like you actually want to win them and it doesn't feel like a consolation prize i'm it's still one of those that i don't really understand why vince even likes them like it's a, such a poor design even the ones that they were the giant pennies when they were copper, mm. like it, it just does not look like something that Vince would have ever co-signed. So it's still to me 
shocking that we had them as long as we did because they've been the worst designs forever. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm glad that we have them. And I'm curious to see what the what the SmackDown ones are going to look like and if they're going to be similar or the same. And then it'll just say that they're the WWE like tag team championships. You know what I mean? Or if I they're going to go someone, like completely yeah. different, a different design. I saw someone tweet that the same picture of the world tag team titles and said the unveiling on Friday and it's instead of the red, it's blue. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm, I'm just wondering if can't. it's going to be the exact same, but it's just not going to say world. I can't WWE. have it. I can't have it. That would It's possible. So and, and okay, like it would suck in a way, but like that's such a better way to go about it like about differentiating them beyond just the name because if you just quickly look at them you would know the red lettering is attributed to raw the blue is to smackdown way better than the different color leathers i would the prefer leathers, the different I hate letters the leathers. i would i'll give you that i i, I yeah. couldn't stand the i couldn't stand the 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 leather it really pissed me off. It was a good idea in theory but i think that had the titles looked differently then maybe we would have been able to accept the leather colors you know what i'm saying like i think 100%. if we didn't hate the design of the actual championship then we might have yeah. been able to like overlook the rest of it but it was just ugly altogether. just everything oh, was, so was all together it was so ugly um Ooh, hey now. so i'm gonna get to the tag title match and then we can get to comments just to, all right let's just to tie up all the tag team stuff so um, then we got the number one contenders match to take on the awesome truth in their first title. Oh, defense. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you before I, I got caught up. What did you think of the segment quick before we talk about this? What did you I know think of it's segment? like, I thought it was fine. I, I don't put like a whole lot of stock into like what is going to happen with like a guy like our truth. Like, you know, it's going to be a comic relief moment. You know that it's not going to be that serious. You know that it might drag a little bit too much or it's like, oh, okay, that wasn't the best. But it's like, I was more so entertained by seeing Triple H's reaction. So that's why I'm like, I don't care that maybe it went on too long. I don't care that Melser is crying about how bad it was today. Like Thank I don't you. care. Thank you. Um, I, because I, you to say that. Um, I, I think it's funny to see everyone's reaction to our truth because it's like you don't know what he's going to say. No and idea. so to me, it was like it was fine. Like it it served its purpose. It got in a, a couple chuckles, you know, from how much everybody loves our truth. It it is what it is. It wasn't meant to be serious you know i uh yield to redundancy okay i, I agree i agree so we see uh a, this number one contenders match between diy the creed brothers and the new day and my first question when i saw this oh my god was where is imperium and why am i asking that because imperium beat the new day in a street fight <laughs> And they're clearly not injured because they were just performing on Raw last week in the Raw After Mania. So, where are my boys? Why are they still in the back and catering? Why are they not in this match? Uh, and they feel like the... I mean, okay, I'm not saying that they had to win necessarily just to be like, okay, they're relevant. So, they've earned yeah. this, this this position. Um, because they chose three babyface teams to go against a babyface tag team. Okay, and so, here's my here's my. I already my logic. know what you're gonna say, but you know you gotta say it for the people. So thank you. Yes, I I have to tech to show you whatever. Um, I believe that before we get into the first topic, that this match, whoever won this match, was going to have a faulty finish, a DQ finish, with Awesome Truth and Imperium will be the ones to come in mid-match, DQ, whatever, and they are the next number one contender, essentially, for the tag titles because you can't do anything with those three teams, all right? All those three teams show, tell you is that you are going to have a match next week for the belts. Like, you just, that's, the, you don't really, other than DIY, you could do long, a little bit of long-term stuff because they have the connection with Awesome Truth. But to me, it just seems like this is ready 
for this is only for a one week type of deal do one backstage segment to hype it up and then build with like a heel tag team like imperium who deserve it to you know get them on the pay-per-view card you know why i love that because that could mean that they're holding off to have the match with imperium until they're in france See, so the European boys get the European love. Fran, I will say France and Germany aren't the biggest of friends, but international no. international peeps stand with international peeps. Well, so. and it's so much easier to travel from country to country. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like states. I was actually talking about this with my uh, peeps, my back home peeps uh, over the weekend when we were celebrating love is that they legitimately go from country to country like us going to like you know, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, yeah. Vermont, uh, you know, for you going to Las Vegas, you yep. know, shit like that. I know. It's Isn't insane. that crazy? I know. It's kind of jelly. Insane. I'm jelly, but um, yeah. So this match was good. So besides the Imperium thing that, like I said, I can get behind it if, uh, if they end up putting them in at Backlash. And Richard said, uh, Imperium lost clean the Sammy and Gable last week. They deserve to be in the triple threat, yeah, because that wasn't for a tag team, anything tag team. Okay, they did, yeah, they lost to Sammy and Gable. That's gate Sammy and Gable story, not Imperiums. Come on, well, and and uh, the new they beat the new day. Why did the new day keep getting put in these matches? The new day got beat in a street fight by Imperium, yeah, we will exactly. not let you forget that. Hell, I won't never okay so we see this match and of course it was incredible it was a good match it was a tag team match these three guys are amazing they go out there like it's the last time that are ever going to be able to put on a match so it was good we see diy win which i love i think they were the right choice um Not the a creams? lot of no um because okay. Because well, we'll what gather ha- what happened at the end. We're gonna um, gather. Yeah, I like DIY because um, I think they're still trying to build them, obviously. And I think there are a lot of people who really wanted to see them win at Mania. So I think this is kind of a way to cater to them. Like, OK, yeah. because I mean, I don't really anticipate Awesome Truth to be champions for that long. I feel like it was to be like, OK, we want to split the titles. One team needs to be from SmackDown. So those titles stay there. The other ones are on Raw why not give our truth that moment at WrestleMania? Cause he's hot right now. Why not do- give them the nostalgia factor of awesome truth? So I think that's kind of what it is, but I don't really know that they're going to be champions for like months and months. Like, no, would I be shocked if they lost them next week on raw? Absolutely not. Like, n- no, like I, <laughs> I would not be surprised. Um, So yeah, so we're going to see DIY versus awesome truth. I think that'll be good. It's going to be good. They, they'll put on a good match, and they have good chemistry already. That's why I have the stance that Imperium is the heel team to come in and start something with them because they could go off the fact that we beat the New Day in a street fight. We did all this, and we mm-hmm. are not getting the respect that we deserve. Our ring and our owl has lost his title, so we are going to go get some gold in honor of him oh it's, yeah. right. it's writing itself really. they need to keep them relevant because who knows how long gunther's going to be gone like i don't know you know yeah, so keep imperium and this reminded me before we get to comments i want to talk about this we got a new wyatt six teaser during this match Ooh. i totally forgot yes, that it was did. during this match so we got the qr code or whatever during the new day entrance which led us to a video that was like you forgot about us and blah 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 and when i tell you guys that i am excited I cannot express to you how excited I am because I'm saying it's the Wyatt six because that's what we think it's going to be. And I think that is the best way for them to go about this. That still involves Bray, but doesn't change anything that he's already done or Mm -hmm. like, uh, it doesn't really like continue anything that he wasn't able to do himself you know what i mean like the white six was not something that he he did but he didn't even really start it so i feel like it's not really like ruining no anything you know what i mean i I see your logic here yeah and i feel like having uncle howdy bo dallas um taylor (laughs) rotunda uh be like the new ringleader um you know he's probably someone who knew a ton about what bray wanted to do um, that he was never able to do. It's the same with the guy that was making the fiend masks and stuff. They were pretty close friends too. So I'm sure there's like a huge collaborative effort. 
and deciding what they're going to do. And when we talked about it, I loved the idea of Uncle Howdy almost being like the mouthpiece for like the gone version of Bray slash the fiend. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's like, they still worship the fiend and Bray Wyatt, but he's not actively here. So it's like, you still have him involved and he's, he's relevant at every show because when you turn the lights off, everyone is automatically. Uh, They just do it. Yeah. So, Yeah, it's just like with CM Punk being gone for 10 years, like how many times were they in Chicago and you heard CM Punk chants? Like it's not going to, you're not, it's not going to stop. So I'm excited. And I feel like this is such a great way for Alexa Bliss to come back. Huge. Because this was like, I think some of the best work of her career. Like it it, could have done better had it been under Triple H instead of Vince, I would say. But yeah, bring her in. And then it's like, who else? Because then there's all these rumors about Eric Rowan coming back that he canceled some of his upcoming dates, indie dates. So that could be cool. Um, And it's so sad because he's like the only one left. Don't forget about my guy. Don't that. No, no, absolutely. Why are you saying no? No, No, I want to know why. Nobody wants Matt Hardy. Why? No, why? No, why? why because he's old and no it's like he's just no like we don't need another matt hardy but run what no no i so disagree with this okay well almost no no one agrees with you i so. know they don't but they don't see that he won't be like the re- like he's gonna be such a useful mind in crafting a lot of the shit like matt hardy created the broken universe matt hardy created while bray was doing this in WWE under the Vince regime, Matt Hardy was doing this for impact and it was so well done and so different from whatever anyone else was seeing. That mind is so valuable in this process that, and he's at the point now where he doesn't like want to be big, you know, in front of it and all that. Like he just wants to be part of like, and needs to be part of it. I don't know. I'm for it. I'm so against anyone. He still wants to wrestle, dude. There's no, he's not trying to take a backstage role. Terrible. Because nobody wants to see 50 year old Matt Hardy wrestle. That's the thing. He's nearing it. Stop. So is Finn Balor. Does Finn Balor perform like Matt Hardy? Um, No. Can he stand up without bowing his legs? Okay, yeah. well also, can we talk about how Matt Hardy's finisher for a thousand years was a super leg drop? So, yeah, okay. if you can't walk, uh, just so then maybe you, you guys should be wrestling no. if you can't. You guys, get up. no, you guys just don't get it. You no. Don't know ball. No, that's rude. Um, no, no, I don't, Sarah, but I don't think he really has anything to do with this though. Like, he's just teasing does. it, but it's like, I would also feel like, in my opinion, this whole thing should be led by Taylor. Agreed. We don't just throw Matt Hardy in there and be like, let you lead it. You do a collaborative effort with Taylor with his fucking brother. You take it over, Matt. Like, that would be messed up. Never said no. for him to take, take it over. You said that I he said should be able to have, like, an influence in the story making and whatever. And influence. That I means creative. I'm, yes, absolutely I'm not should. into it. I, because no, Matt Hardy is, like, one of your favorite wrestlers. So that's why you want it. Ah, uh, and I have actually... Listen to his shit. I am a big that's, fan. Right? That's great. I just I don't agree. I don't think You're that we so... need. I don't think we need him in this. I feel like I disagree. It would be better to utilize the people that you have. He's a free agent. Well, they don't have him, so mm, yet. Yeah, I don't think we need him. I just I'm not I'm not into it. Um, are you guys hating on Finn? Do not. Are we okay. hating on Finn? Really? No, they're talking about something else. I was gonna be like, do not even I was compare to Finn Balor like, to Matt Hardy. Do not do it. Oh um, wow! What no, is the we don't. I started. We don't want Jeff either. Okay. No, I, I love, can't deal with Jeff. I love Jeff Hardy, but I Jeff no. Hardy is one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. But I do not want him stepping into another ring right now because I just don't know that it's best for his health. Honestly, his overall overall well-being. I don't know. I just want Matt Hardy to be included in the Bray Wyatt story. That's it. Okay. Do you want to get to some comments? So uh Katie Mar- oh the not the right one but um uh I remember being so mad JBL blew up this- me too man I was so pissed why think I got it I resurrected it you know on the third day um thank you we got one yes yes that's a peep right there there we go 
good boy. Um, Mr. Anderson, this is rude. This is just rude. Most people think that, though. I know, but I am not like most people. I think that it. I, I don't mind him as like a backstage voice or whatever. I feel like he could be good, but I feel like he's getting to that Jericho point where it's like, okay, dude, we probably oh, need to like hang it up. That's like, what. That's what. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. But he comes back and he's like the backstage voice, like a Bobby Roode type of thing, or even a Pete Dune. Pete Dune is producing speed. So well, yeah, but that's not, he's also performing like. So that's what I mean. Like, I I don't know. I don't know if, I, if he had like some sort. Of, I just don't know about his actual relationship with Ray Wyatt because a lot of the time people try to. And I'm not saying that this is what it is. I don't know the history of their relationship. I don't know if they were actually super close. I don't know. But I'm saying a lot of the time when someone passes, people like to like try and rewrite how close they actually were to that person who passed and they try to make it seem like they were really close and really great friends and they talked all the time and it's like mostly just because they're trying to like get they... clout like in attention off of like oh you were friends with somebody who passed away you know what i'm saying like i don't know if that's what matt is doing or if they were actually like super close and talked all the time and like shared like ideas about stories and stuff like if that's what it is then sure be a collaborative they thing were. but if it really is just like i want to be in this because i had fun feuding with him when i was in wwe like no they were legit I, they were they were friends I, I don't know i know i know and they were friends and they were very close and whatnot so that's why you absolutely should be in it uh yeah, okay. So um then we move on <laughs> to um Indy Hartwell. It looks like she is coming to the dark side. Um, as her and Candice LeRae had a match against Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree, who apparently was paying homage to the Bella Twins. Your um, favorite wrestlers, Sarah. Yeah, don't even How... get me started because freaking Nikki was like, I almost wanted to call Tony Khan to go to AEW. When, after I saw that Mercedes Monet went there and she was talking about how she wanted to bring the women's revolution to every company, I was like, oh my god, I need to call Tony Khan and return to wrestling. And it was like, bitch, no one wants that. Not a single person on this planet that is above the age of 15 wants that, but whatever. Um, you anyway. can look, but you can't touch. Okay. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, did I... Did I, I skipped over this part, I think. What yeah, I skipped over the I skipped over this, so I have to add this. I skipped over oh, scoozy. DM Ooh. Hunk. Oh, we did for we did miss DM Hunk kicking a TV. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna oh. I'm just adding that. Oh, you're adding it? You're eating it right now? Yeah, are you gonna keep asking me what I'm doing or are we doing play by play? Is that what we're doing now? I did I, I do play by play. Okay, I, no, that no. was one of my traits in college. Okay, I don't, like, I don't like it. Okay, so it looks like Indy Hartwell is joining the dark side with Candice LeRae in their match against Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. So uh she Indy gets involved in doing the shenanigans behind the referee's back, which um helps Candace get the win. And uh kind of seems to at least temporarily repair their relationship because when they were making their entrance together, Candace had no interest in doing their little hand thing, their hand hug or whatever they do. Um, and that really threw Indy off. So I, I mean, I'm like 50, 50 on this. It's like, I'm interested because it is a different storyline. It is something in the tag team division and they don't tend to really do anything with the women's tag team division. And I feel like this is a little bit interesting because we haven't seen them as a heel, either of them as heels. Um, I'm just kind of also like, eh, because they just keep going up against Maxine and Ivy. And it's like, I don't care about this. Like, I don't, I'm not interested in that part. So yeah, <laughs> um, if they could that. not have a 15th match with them next week, then that would be ideal. <laughs> I I am becoming a fan of this little weekly or bi-weekly segment that we get with this because you get to see Maxine Dupree, her progress in the ring. And that's the story that we're, we're trying to tell right now. And I mean, I like, do you just need to have them on television and get them yeah. ready as for Indian Candace, you need more heels on your roster. In there are no thing. heels I know. on the raw roster. How do you do this? Well, little shit like this. And Candace has been incredible in this new heel role. And really very just, you could tell she's just had it with all the, you know, 
happy-go-lucky, I'm in La La Land type of uh, mentality that we're all having. Mm -hmm. And then Indy, you know, we haven't seen her really be a heel. And for her to not, here to help out, I mean, and not do things the right way. Like, we got some, we got some nice stories. We get some good, like, in things that are investing. Like, you want to be invested in a little bit. Uh, it's nice to see that. I just want to see them continue down this path against, like, a more legitimate team. You know what I mean? And not against the two girls that are the most inexperienced on the roster, you know, and you're like taking advantage of the fact that like Maxine sucks, you know what I mean? It's like, I, how, how, uh, how legitimate are you if you're winning and like pulling shenanigans against two girls that like don't have that much experience in the ring? You know what I mean? Like if we want to take you seriously, then I think you need to go against some more, I don't know, bet like better well, tag who? teams. Who? Ooh, um ooh, well ooh. aren't Caden and Katana on there? Like, or what if they have a tag team championship match against damage control? I'm just saying, like I, they, they fought last night. They fought against Miss Chelsea Green. I know. Um I love them. They see, this is also her. what I'm saying. Longer than three minutes and against different people. So um yeah. So then, as I said, because I forgot about DM Hunk, I can't even believe it. It's because he was on for only a split second that disappointed me because I want to see my boo. So Drew was just in the back and he was being interviewed, basically just trying to be uh, interviewed. Yeah. About, uh, you know, what has happened to him from Mania and Punk's involvement and ruining his short championship title run and then making sure that he did not become the number one contender and uh surprisingly dm hunk is just laughing but it was like maniacally laughing like I'm it was off, I'm it was laughing. sadistic it yeah. was sadistic for sure so then he kicks yeah. a monitor and he leaves without saying anything so i was really bummed because i was like let me see you baby on tv and that's not what we got so that's all that's all i got um and you know, it's fine because you, you don't want to see him overly use the whole CM Punk thing because clearly he wasn't there. Um, and if they want to continue that, then they couldn't last night because he wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. But the things that are starting to worry me is that he is reportedly only signed for like five to six more weeks. So oh, yeah. that's what makes me really nervous because then people are talking about like, oh, he's not even gonna you know be in the title picture he's not gonna leave clash of the castle with the title blah 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 blah. and i'm just like you guys like i feel like everyone wants to come for triple h for dropping the ball with okada or dropping the ball with osprey and it's like oh my god you couldn't get them if he drops the ball by not keeping drew mcintyre that i think is way worse way worse, way I, worse. Don't, I don't foresee it being a thing though so i this is the thing i'm trying I like don't. I'm trying to pay attention to what's going on with all the news insiders and the people who are usually like, you know, they have credible sources or whatever. I'm trying to listen to them and take that in. So I'm not going into this blind. So if it did happen, it's not like, oh, oh I didn't know that this was going to happen. Oh, my God. But then at the same time, I'm trying to remember the last time that we're having this, which was what, like a year ago. And they were like, ha, 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 ha. Like everyone was saying that Drew was on his way out. But no, he's not. Remember, Triple H even addressed it. Oh, I know. Oh, and so I'm trying to also keep that in mind that they had kept negotiations and whatever, like very close to the chest and that people didn't know. And so they couldn't report on it. I'm trying to think like that, too, because I really do not want to even think about the idea of Drew like not being in WWE right now when he's on his best run ever. Like I just. Okay. And I, this, I have all the faith in the world that Drew McIntyre will not be going to AEW because if Drew McIntyre was to leave and just get the bag at AEW and pretty much do what Edge is doing. I also think um, that if he's actually close to CM Punk, like they had been in real life, he's going to take CM Punk's advice and not go anywhere near AEW. But he would probably go back to DNA, I think, feuds, is the problem. Your best feuds are the ones that you have with your friends. Mm -hmm. Just gonna throw, that, throw that sentence out there. You can chew it up, peeps, and digest that all you want. Um, but your best feuds are the ones you have with your best friends. So after that sentence has been said, if he was to go to AEW and just get the bag, 
and just sit and whatever. Like, who is he going to fight? He's going to be on collision. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. If he goes, he'll be on collision. And he'll face this person, that person. He'll do a few with Jericho and how Jericho, they should just team up and like the old, like, be like these old whatever bullshit he could say. He knows that. So why is he going to do that where he could legitimately go on probably the best run of his entire career and just stay in WWE and work with probably some of the best uh, minds in all of professional wrestling. So I don't see. I think it's more about what WWE is willing to offer him is what the problem is. I think that is what could potentially make him leave. I don't think it has anything to do with like money. I think it's more so about what are you planning for me? Am I going to be world champion? Are you going to keep having me do all this other stuff, but not reward me? Like, you know what I'm saying? I think that will be more like uh, that would be the basis of why he would leave. If they were like, yeah, no, we're going to keep Damien here. And then when punk comes back, he's going to be champion or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that would be more of it. Cause I think that WWE is like, they're, they're making so much money right now. They, there's no reason for them to lowball a guy like drew, like no, pay the man. Not pay yeah. the man you know um so that's what that i think is what more so concerns me just because it feels so perfect for them to have clash at the castle and drew walks out as champion like that feels too perfect to be true and that's what worries me is it's like okay is it because it feels too good to be true that that means it's not going to happen um i don't know so i that's why i'm trying to just be like aware of all of the possibilities and like if he does leave and he goes back to tna or something like i'll support him there but i just feel like it's so bad like you cannot lose drew mcintyre right now and then that also would impact having like this legendary feud with cm punk like you cannot have everybody get invested in this for then drew to be like you know do his summer of punk thing where he leaves like you can't you can't tease this for months and then it's be yeah and then you just have to kind of stop it because oh well drew's not coming back it's like it's probably it's your fault that he's not coming back it's not going to be drew's decision it's going to be your decision you don't want to pay him the money that's and they're they're going yeah, to I, I hope so uh, Vinny makes a good um they got Swerve, and it's really this last uh, sentence here of the comment that gets me. They got Swerve. Swerve is the future. Swerve is the next champion and deserves a lengthy title run with the championship. If Drew goes over there, he's not beating Swerve, and then he's going to get relegated down to Rampage and Collision. Like, do we need that? Do we need Daddy Magic interviewing <laughs> Drew Galloway? Backstage VW. No, I don't want it. This is the thing, too. I think that, like, when you think about the WWE guys who went to AEW and did well, the ones who seem to have done the best are people who were never given real, like, world championship opportunities. The people that you always thought should be in the main event, but they weren't ever viewed that way. Those are the guys that are being that are killing it in AEW because that's what fans wanted to see. They wanted to see Daniel Bryan in the main event. They wanted to see John Moxley in the main event. They want to see Swerve get there, you know, because everyone mm-hmm. was sitting there and like, they should be, they're good enough to be there. It's kind mm-hmm. of like you can compare it to the Cody Rose situation. Everybody wanted to see that. That's why he's now two years later. That's where he is. I think when you bring in a guy, like you see like edge, like, yeah, okay. Edge is doing okay, but they're not going to like, prioritize giving him a world title run because it's like he's already had how many and the same thing with like drew mcintyre like he doesn't need to establish himself as a serious competitor he's already been he's a multi-time champion he's near like near 40 years old like they're not going to say yeah let's give him this opportunity over somebody else like no he's already a credited performer like I don't know if any of that makes sense, but like uh, uh, to me, just as an outside looking outsider looking in, it just feels like it's more so the guys that you always knew should be in that position. That's who AEW and is. It's the real. Re- it's the it's the wrestling that to me that stands out over these guys, like the Blackpool Combat Club. Literally, Mox, Danielson, Claudio, they're wrestlers. Like they're they are your indie guys, like that just love this the wrestling aspect of it the in-ring See, I, stuff i hate when you say this <laughs> because i right. don't 
Well, no, because I, I think that you're then saying that like people in WWE like don't give a shit about wrestling, that they're not good wrestlers, that they're not like but I don't that say good. That at all. But that's, that's what, what I'm mean. saying. It comes off as you're like because it because you'll say like AEW is about wrestling and WWE is about entertainment. Well, I don't know how else I don't to describe really... it. Well, because to me, saying that they're more about entertainment is like discouraging like the performances of the See, wrestlers. And that's like, what and that's you you're right, and that's why I struggle saying that. It's more that. Like for okay, I, I'll kind of try to do it this way. When it comes to long term storytelling and you know trying to actually get you invested in something like that, like a story, a feud, whatever, that's where you go to WWE because those are the best. Where AEW and indies and all that, like the matches themselves are the ones that tell. Like it's not the you know storytelling that goes into it, the feuds, the little stuff. It's the match itself that gets you invested where in wwe it's more like it feels bigger like i don't know how else to I describe it to me it's kind of like uh you know it's one one thing that i agree with cm punk is that aew cares about the five-star Meltzer matches so that's why they're yeah, always putting on yeah. these matches but see that's the thing is like that caters of course to uh segment of professional wrestling fans of course um that they're always going out there and trying to put on the best match possible like as i said when we were talking about uh the tag match earlier uh that they were all out there like it was the last match they were ever going to have like they're putting Mm -hmm. everything out there which is good but then at the same time i like that wwe doesn't necessarily ask them of that or those wrestlers in wwe don't try to do that every night because then when you do get a banger of a match it feels more special you're not jaded by it you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like if they were yeah. going out there and doing five star matches every night, then what's exciting about them having a match at Mania? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I do agree I, with that. I get what you're saying when you put it in that way. I think that yeah, that's what is a big thing that differentiates them. And of course, it's again like what CM Punk said is there's more of an indie mindset over in AEW, and that's because it's being run by a guy who's never run a wrestling company, and, and then indie guys. So it's like that makes sense. Um. When you put it in that way, I can't argue with you. I That's what I like, tried to do, but yeah. I I don't really I struggle with details. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's just like it's hard to think of the proper wording of like Yeah, because I mean I say that they wrestle more. It's like it's they're both wrestling well, companies. Well, yeah, because yeah. like I know that you're not trying to be like, yeah, you know, Finn Balor sucks in the ring and like, yeah. Swerve Strickland's so much better. Like that's because he's a wrestler. I, you know I what I mean? All of those people, they are annoying. Oh yeah, no, there's the cultists. Oh my yeah, god. I know. Uh god. it's funny because it's always like the cultists of, of WWE think that there's only cultists of AEW and vice versa. Like they don't oh, it's hilarious. Like it on both sides. It's like, no, you guys are both gatekeepers, you're both like loyal, blind yeah. followers, like nothing bad can ever come out of either company. The other company is bad and they suck, and you know, and then it doesn't help when Tony Khan is like, We hate each other. Me and oh WWE God. hate each other. I can't I can't wait. I cannot wait for the Thursday show because I read Tony's comments about if the all out footage should have been um, released. And oh my, I, there's not enough time. We have stuff, actual stuff that we have to talk about. Mm-hmm. But goddamn, I need to go on a little bit of a rant there because that was so Mark Zuckerberg robotic. I Shiv- couldn't. Shivani too was being dumb. Don't I? And I love Shivani. I know. But I like, love Shivani. I'm like, you're really trying to save your ass. That's that why you're pissed like, that, me off. I'm like, just be, just be real. Like you thought it was stupid. You weren't like, God, in, you I weren't think, in character, bro. Like I can stop. Name five things that make them similar. That's a TikTok. I should make that a TikTok. <laughs> okay, so um, back to the real. Wrestling yes. company. So here. Damian Priest, he's getting back on his high horse to try and be the leader of the Judgment Good. Day, mostly because uh mommy is going to be gone. So we see that a little bit when you know they're all consoling her. And I did you notice that like JD like wanted to laugh? Like, I don't know if he just like feels uncomfortable in these like sentimental situations, but when they were all there, and then it was like he just had this smile on his face, and I'm like, I know he's not like happy that Rhea's leaving, no, yeah, but it almost felt like he was just uncomfortable with this moment being taped, you know, because they yeah. actually have like close friendships with each other. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, we have to play it up for the camera guys. Like, oh, well, Rhea, I'm going to miss you. Like, I just thought, yeah, that was no, I know what you mean. Cause <laughs> I, 
usually take the role of, of the friend in that time where everyone's sad and it's, it's a sad time. So you don't want to look at a, everyone's face and be sad because it's going to make you even more sad. Yeah. So you need that person that is kind of fighting through the pain mm-hmm. and can give that smile and say, it's going to be all right. Like we're going yeah. to, and the fact that JD's that guy out of all the people who didn't, who was told he should never be in judgment day he doesn't yep. have what it takes, and then That's boom, he's the one that you know is is keeping everyone in good spirits. That's it's my nice. Guy. That's, and that's he, he, if you have a problem with it, you know what he would say to you. This is what he would say to you, brother. <laughs> um, that's gonna be like a moment that lives in infamy in my mind. And oh yeah, that only you will understand because I don't know the thousands of other people that were there that night, and if yep. any of any everybody else who saw it besides the guy who was on. Nah, the that was that was a special. That was a special moment for Mania weekend where like I know I wish I got it on. One, it what? wasn't a great. No, it wasn't like a big moment, like 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 a return or something. It was yeah, something so subtle, but like it struck, and you're like. That's my guy. Yeah, I know. That's that was like, birds. You were you were so giddy. You're like I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> king. Like, Tell that motherfucker what is up, bro. Yeah. Was that before stand and deliver? No, that was before, was, uh, before raw. Smack raw. It was before raw because it was for speed, or maybe it was SmackDown. Whenever WWE was speed was filmed, night, it was whatever night JD did three. He was he did like triple duty. I think that was raw. Because he did speed, yeah, he did yeah, yeah, yeah. something else, and then he was in like yeah, no, he was in he was yeah, he was he did speed against Axiom, and then he was like in a tag match, I think, with and then he was like involved in a judgment day segment when they were like beating yeah, Truth, yeah, yeah. when they beat up to our truth. So I think that was raw. Uh the yeah. Anyway, um so uh Damien looks like he's just gonna try and take on that role which I think is fine I think it's interesting I'm curious to see because like I just saw uh Mr. Anderson was saying oh wrong wrong one uh was it Mr. Anderson oh no it was uh Jay he said uh it feels like the Judgment Day are going to turn on Priest like they did Edge I think that's possible um just given like I mean the past of how they kind of didn't take too too kind of a liking to uh damien trying to assert himself as like the leader of judgment day because remember there was those weeks of like there is no leader of judgment day we are all equal or that period um but i think oh, that it, de- it depends on like the what they're trying to do with judgment day while Rhea is gone because it looks like they're going to try and bring Rhea back as a baby face and that doesn't fit with judgment day right now i mean technically she could just like go right back into judgment day and no one would care no um but it's going to be interesting because they could do that um but then i don't know how i feel about damien being a baby face i need damien to be heel i want judgment day to say a thing they can all be tweeners Besides JD and Dom, what'd you think of Finn's reaction to when he laid the laid the law down about <laughs> how he wants Jey Uso taken care of? No, I know. I, I I Finn is so funny. Finn is one of those people that it's like underrated funny. Like people don't get. Like he just has these small mannerisms where you can just tell. Like I, <laughs> I was watching the clip earlier from uh, when they were trying to recruit Jay Uso to Judgment Day, and when he's like, "Damien, Damien's a fan, and Dom's a fan, and Rhea's a fan." He's like, "For real?" And he's like, "For real?" Like that. Like, <laughs> just like yeah, like, like you look to the back of one man. Yeah, yeah, like these little things that like finn does is just funny and so to me it was like you knew that he was like it, it seemed he was internally pissed but then he was like i like it you know like, <laughs> he's just like okay you know so to me i love it and that's why i'm like i i need finn to be i, I need this to stay together just why, please why not have together. finn go for the intercontinental I mean, Judgment Day wins gold. We don't need to focus on the tag titles because that's Dom and JD's job. Well, that Your I think job. could be people have thinking are thinking that there could be some groundwork being placed there to have some drama between Damien and Finn because it was like he was like, nope, we're not going to focus on the tag titles because why would he? He's world champion. Yeah, he's world champion. No, you drive. know, so he doesn't care. Like he doesn't care that you don't have a title. But I also am in the mindset of I don't think that Damien is going to be champion for very long. And as much as I love Damien, I want Drew to be champion coming out of Clash of the Castle. So I don't want him to be champion for very long, which means I don't really want to see him versus Finn at this point. No, I don't. 
because I don't yeah, I want to see Damien lose to Drew because I want Drew to leave Scotland as champion. So that's like it's 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 hard because I wanted to see you know like Finn as world champion and then have a feud with Damien and now it's the opposite and I'm like I, the timing is off. The timing I mean, is not so desirable. Off. Um that's life. That's life. I know. That's uh, Finn is going to be jealous, probably. Uh, I know. I, I I would love to see Finn get like a proper title run. I just don't think. I don't know if we're ever going to get it. Um, we will. That would be great. That would it be great. It is the Triple H era. Anything's possible. I know. I know. It's just unfortunate because I still feel like he could have won it from Seth. But whatever. We're not going back like eight months. Um. Anyway, so then we do see Andrade versus Dom Dom. And I don't have a whole lot to say about this match because it's like, okay, cool. Like, you're here. Like, I am representing the LWO for my hero and my stereo. And Dom Dom is like, I hate my dad. And so that's why you're having a match. <laughs> Um, so I hate my dad. Yeah, I'm just basically what it dad. is. He's a deadbeat, bro. Um, hey. didn't you see what I did oh. to him? So oh. the only thing I really wanted to talk about is uh Dom Dom hitting a Canadian destroyer cool. on the apron. And uh Canada. yeah. And um, I'm obsessed with the Canadian destroyer, as any peep who has been following us enough knows. And it's it's got to a point where it can be a little bit watered down especially in the other company when we're just sitting back to back Canadian destroyers not mm -hmm. protecting uh the finish itself but uh, the the apron one is so goddamn good he yeah. should have got the win after that I agree Jay but um it was smart how he just lay on the ape like the floor all that so if you want to go into that nitty-gritty whatever but I love this move and the fact that Dom could pull it off that's just that's that's you can you can ball you can ball. He's come so far, so far. He's come so far, and the only reason why he could even do something like this is because he's in a match with Andrade. You know, Andrade yeah. is just like at his level, or if not above, obviously. So it's like, yeah, because you guys are, are very you like you understand how the other one wrestles. So that's why you can like do you can together. put on great matches. So, um, but I would say other than okay, cool, we saw the Canadian Destroyer that was sick. Way to go, Dom. My other thing is okay, we see obviously Andrade wins. They're trying to build him up, but like, what can they do to make him more over? Because I love his entrance. First of all, sick ass entrance. I'm glad that that's like his normal entrance and it wasn't just like oh this is my pay-per-view entrance and i'm coming out with this mask and whatever yeah. but i feel like i there it, it just they i feel like they need to do something more to get people behind him and it's like yeah okay that whole moment of him reuniting with zelina vega after all these years and him supporting Rey mysterio okay cool they're on smackdown that's not gonna work now mania is over he's on raw it's like you need to do more and I would just hate for it to be another situation where they don't really know what to do with him. So he flounders again. And then it's like, okay, are we going to get another situation where you're leaving because they don't know how to use you? I I'm, no. I'm just concerned. No, that's too early. Uh, that's I, I do agree that you can feel that type of feeling with mm -hmm. how they're going, but it patience uh, with him. You're going to see that that's the thing right now is, have him be in these matches and win these types of matchups, like the Sheamus thing. Mm -hmm. It's all building so that you have contenders for the Intercontinental Championship yeah. or the WWE Championship, depending mm -hmm. on whatever. And because of that, you're going to get these weird matches right now, especially right before pay-per-view, where we have a little bit of time. I think it's like three weeks or something. Um, so you're going to get these weird matches and so what if we get these weird matches they're good they're, they're very good and mm -hmm. they keep you entertained throughout and it does wonders for um you know the younger guys so yeah yeah i'm i'm gonna try to say God, hopeful because it's I still love, early like you said i um, love roll of ice god well, nxt is okay. on right now we got that All right, so. cool. oh you can you well, well i fought well how about you're about to not come do, do you calm down all right let me swoon um, over Lola Vice while you swoon over Cody Rhodes. Or who else would I swoon on NXT? Um, am I supposed to know this? Or is this like Are you really? You don't know who I would swoon over as an NXT? And NXT? Why am I blanking? Give me a hint, please. Oh my god! No, he's no. he's 
not American. It's not Noam Dar. Oh my god. No. Disgusting. We went over this. I know. That's why I'm getting mad at myself, but I can't You're, think of this. You should be mad at yourself. How about you go into this and I'll think of it? Okay. Because I don't um, want you to tell me. Okay. So Cody Rose continues his victory tour, which, you know, it is what it is. I think there's the main thing that I want to talk about is the reactions oh. from the fans. What? It's Ilya. Yeah. Yeah, that oh, was bad. God. That was that, that was just, so bad. That's why I'm like, what am I supposed to was, say? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, how do was, you that was so bad? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I was yeah. too lost in Vice City. It's okay. That's, that's just tough. <sighs> um anyway, so uh, Cody continues his victory tour and people are kind of upset about it. That's what I wanted to talk about because he doesn't Good. come out and really say anything um, new, just kind of responds to The Rock who had posted some Instagram post saying that Seth Rollins was the MVP, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Cody just is like, yeah, whatever. Okay, cool. And then he calls out Jay Uso. They have this whole thing, whatever, right? It's like irrelevant. We don't really care about that. My, my whole conversation about this that I want to have is I was even arguing with one of my like Twitter friends who was saying, like, oh my God, I can't believe how Cody carries his, his belt. Like, this is so embarrassing. He has absolutely no aura. Like he's just carrying it. Like it's a purse or like a, a grocery bag, blah, 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 blah. And I was responding to him and I, my first comment to him was, oh my God, calm down. <laughs> that was the first thing I said, because I'm like, you know whatever there's and then there's these people that are saying why is he still going on a victory tour he really yeah. is a politician why is he gonna have this random match with like aj styles or la Knight at backlash and the idea is just like okay first of all he's doing double duty right now okay you're complaining that he's around too much the irony yep. the absolute oh, the irony. absolute irony is yeah. oh, you fickle you yeah. fickle pickles yes and then you're mad that he's going to have a match for th with the title on the line at the next pay-per-view that he's going to be around for with a person who's not Roman Reigns, despite the fact that Roman Reigns is not here. Please explain to me what else he's supposed to do yeah. if it's not have a new match for the title against a person that earned their contendership through a like attorney. Please explain. I, um, I, I can't. I, I really have no other no reasoning for it. Um, and the 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 complaints about how he holds the title. First of all, someone put side by side picture of Dusty holding the title like that. Thank so, you, somebody. Yeah. So next, next person are, who does it. But also, say it. So many people at home do not understand how heavy these belts are like you do not understand how much that title weighs probably 15 to 20 pounds okay Great. so you probably have no idea and the only reason i know is because i had to hold your stupid spitter belt multiple oh, times what? and what? that thing is heavy and it's not even the wwe championship belt you know what i mean uh, so it's like yeah. and people are also like disregarding i think how massive the undisputed championship is it's fucking huge. It's humongous. So it's not something that's going to be comfortable to wear on your shoulder for very long. It's not going to be comfortable. And most guys do not want to walk around with the title around their waist for very long. That's not the ideal. I didn't. I, it, it got so, really, it got really annoying at some points. And also the complaints about an You're aura. Right. How much aura is a baby face supposed to have, guys? How much Ooh. aura? How much aura did John Cena have at the height of you suck, Cena? Cena sucks. Please tell me how much aura that man had that you guys felt was like. Mwah, mwah. I'm, sorry. You know? I'm not laughing at you. And as soon as you're talking about Cody and going on this, like all this. Who's the first page that pops up on my screen is fucking Cody Rhodes. Is he on NXT? Doing, yeah, it was a it was like something to make a wish. Oh, but like oh, okay. it, it was the commercial right before. Yeah, the, and it, literally Cody Rhodes is the first face. Yeah. that pops up. Um, yeah, dude. Like this man is the face of the company, and when you are the face of the company, you hold your title like this sometimes. Like who okay, because you hold it because <laughs> it's a belt, it's a championship, it's a trophy oh, yeah what do we do with trophy? we don't wear our trophies sometimes 
And come on, guys. Whoa. You're complaining about something that you couldn't even complain about Roman. Roman was too famous to even hold his own damn belt. He had Paul <laughs> Heyman carrying it. Like, you, you're not saying anything about how Roman carried it because he never did. Yeah, like sometimes and when he did, it was for two minutes before a match. You know what I mean? Like, come on, well, brother. He's got to. He's got to. If in for two minutes for the match, he's got to show show up like that. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna so lie, Sarah. Doing this right now, kind of heavy. Okay, kind, yeah. kind, kind of heavy. So that's what I mean. It's like, oh my god, you I fickle, think, fickle pickles. Well, and I feel like most of the people that are complaining, and I even said this to my Twitter friend, but I'm like, I he was a Roman guy. So like I and he said that that has nothing to do with it, and I'm like I, I I'm sure in your mind it doesn't, but I I think it more than likely is that you're still probably a little upset because like I was fired there by her. I just don't I I just can't imagine getting that bothered over something like oh my god I can't stand the way Cody Rhodes holds the championship oh my like my day I, is ruined like what are we doing I legitimately cannot stand the people that are complaining even the slightest it's about just, what Cody's doing because it's, it's so ridiculous it really to the is. point where you're actually just nitpicking yes. because you have the attention span of a fruit fly on cocaine <laughs> and you don't know how to actually enjoy something for more than five seconds it's just like in you for so long we had this oh is the champion gonna show up yeah. is you know roman gonna do this when is he like and you just wanted cody to win and now that cody's won you're on to the next person like how are your relationships probably terrible it's if like we're going that way like it's, it's almost like they they miss not seeing the champion so they had nothing to complain about other than him not being around nothing it's because it's like if roman was around every week maybe you would take issue with how he held the title lol or paul Heyman, because he never did like come on guys it's not that serious like cody is a super super duper duper almost nauseating baby face deal with it i mean coming from cody's probably number one fan it's like he's a nauseating baby. Well, because you baby. know I love me a but heel, you, but like but the you're, you're you're right there. You know, yeah. you're you're right there. There are certain there are certain people that I'm okay with being nauseating baby faces, and their names are John Cena and Cody Rhodes. That's basically the only ones. But yeah, also, my fun. original love for them was rooted in them being heels. So that's it makes in sense. their circle gets a square because yeah. they can do both. Yeah, <laughs> get you a man who can do both. Okay. So um we're gonna skip over the other match. I just want to get to the main event because we're already going long. Uh Finn versus Jay. It's whatever. Um yeah, so cool. the main thing we can talk about, of course, is Sami Zayn's entrance, right? Which well, some people Jay are and Finn. Yeah. So uh yeah. people are dubbing it as the best entrance to ever happen on Monday Night Raw. And this is the funniest thing, right? You guys don't have a problem with Sami Zayn getting this treatment with kissing his wife and kissing babies before and after matches, but you have a problem with Cody Rhodes coming out there and being like, Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for supporting me. You have a problem with that, but not with Sami Zayn going Whoa. through the Rocky, the Rocky treatment for WrestleMania bah, and then bah, bah, literally bah, bah, bah. walking through the crowd because he's in his hometown. No one, no one's mad about that. But anyway, um, yeah, it was a cool entrance. I mean, cool. I mean, to me, it's like, yeah, they're in Montreal. He's going to get this treatment. We just saw it a year ago. So it's like, yeah, I guess it's cool. But like, I wasn't like, like overly excited about it the way that the internet was because it was like, no, like Vinny, we what? just saw it a year ago where he had this like really triumphant return to Montreal and had this like yeah. epic match, you know? So to me, it was cool. Yeah. But like, I wasn't like bouncing off the walls, but, um, so we see the main event between Chad Gable and Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. And it's an incredible match. We knew that it was going to be an incredible match because, hello, it's the two of them. And the way that I love, the reason why I loved this match so much was the psychology in this match. Oh, because it was incredible. We have this whole storyline going into it where Gable wanted to face Gunther for the title. He got his chances and he lost both times. Tried to get in through the gauntlet. He lost to Sami Zayn. Then he decides I'm going to stop holding my grudge about losing and I am going to help my friend because I want him to beat Gunther. If I can't do it, I need him to do it. Trains with Sami. 
for weeks leading up to WrestleMania. Sammy is able to take that advice, implement it in his match at WrestleMania against Guther, and dethrone the longest reigning Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion at 666 days and become the new champion. So that way he can repay everything that Gable did for him all this time by giving him a title match on Monday Night Raw. So they know each other very well. We have that whole storyline going into it. And so that was so cool to see how they made sure we knew that that was like an a, an element that they were trying to make sure we understood in their match. Um, so I loved that. And um, Sammy wins, as we knew, I would assume. I would, I, because this is the thing if Sammy beat Gunther only to lose the championship two weeks later, yeah, you, I, I, I can't deal with that, Sarah. I, I really could not have dealt with that as your no. friend and podcast host, and <laughs> you know, just whatever. I was not going to do that, um, because I can't fly out to Arizona and talk you off that ledge. Yeah, uh, um, it would have been really tough. It would have yeah. been really tough. Yeah, we would have rescheduled this show. Maybe we would have just pretended it never happened. I would have had to do it alone. Yeah, I don't like being alone. Yeah, so we knew that that was going to happen, right? And he goes over to try to uplift Gable and just, like, give him some positive reinforcement. Like, awesome. oh, man, this was a hell of a match. Like, you are the guy. Thank you so much for helping me get this title. You deserve this eventually. Just not right now. And then it's like, Gable's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, eh, huh, huh. like I'm so mad because this means more to me, damn it. And then Sammy is like, oh, let me go kiss and hug my babies and my wife. And as he's doing it, Gable comes out of nowhere and he German was. suplexes him. And I sit there and I was like, that was incredible. Gable, you are the type of nauseating baby face that I cannot stand. There's just something about you that I'm just like, <coughs> <laughs> and so this is like that spice that I've want, been wanting. And we predicted this a couple weeks ago when we were saying the only way that I could see this happening is I think that we talked about it maybe in the gauntlet match or something or that he was going to interfere and make sure that Gunther retained or something. I forget in what scenario we were saying that this was going to happen, but we were going to say that Gable was going to be mad that Sammy got that opportunity that he felt like he deserved because it means more to him. And um, <laughs> that's eventually what happened. I can't that's what you... it sounds like to me. Okay. When it's Gable's really like, bad. It's, I'm Chad Gable. This means more to me. It's I like, okay. I agree with you that it's bad and it's it is annoying. really not because it, it, it didn't hit me until Michael Cole or McAfee said that it was like, he's the under like the champion in his hometown under like all this. And I was like, it, there's no bigger match that yeah. Sammy could have for his first title defense. And yeah. then Gable still with the moniker that it means more to you. Like, it no, it doesn't. Damn it. Oh like, my it God. It means a lot to you, but it doesn't mean more to you. And yeah. the fact that he, the moment that his turn happens is Sammy hugging his wife. I don't think his kid was there, but I think his no. wife, yeah. uh, and German suplexes him away um, from his wife like, as he's embracing that was her. So unreal. I gave so much credit to Gable there. And then the ankle lock mm -hmm. on the apron. I honestly thought, because I as I said, I fell asleep before the the first watch of it. So I had to go back uh before and rewatch it. Mm -hmm. I saw the clips and thought that we would have got a German on the apron mm -hmm. into him on the apron, mm -hmm. I think that would have been a little bit more devastating. But, you know, beggars can't be if you choose here. here. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was just, oh, it was so incredible. It was so incredible. It was, like, it was a, such an easy way for them to do that, too, because, um, you know, he's going to get heat when you're doing it in Sammy's home city you know like exactly. when the when the cameras cut off there was an fu gable chance that broke out Beautiful. um and so i'm like okay yeah this is like what i said that i feel like we've needed from gable like when we were talking about the possibility of this happening i'm like yeah we need to see some sort of like something different from him because they've already separated him quite a bit from alpha academy in recent weeks uh, I mean, they didn't even have him in the ladder match for the tag titles. They had it be Tazawa and Otis, you know? So it's like that felt like, okay, we're, they're definitely trying to push him as a singles guy. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then it looks like we might be getting Park Angle 2.0, where we're going to get Chad Gable leading, you know, um, what was it, American Alpha? Is that what it was? No, no. Well. Well, was that what? What do you mean, American Alpha? Well, when when it was uh, uh, Benjamin and Haas. Benjamin and Haas. Oh, Team Angle. Angle. Yeah, yeah. Team, what, was it, what was American Alpha? There wasn't that not something? American Alpha was Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. Oh, okay. So I'm right around that. So it's like, it looks like they're going to be doing that, but with the creeds. And uh, Julius already teased it because he tweeted ready, willing, willing, and, and then everyone's like, Gable. And I'm like, okay. To me, that is the best case scenario for them as well. Kind of like what we were saying with Liv. Like, it's just like the way that this is going, I think the creeds need to be more interesting. And the way to make them more interesting is turning them heel. Like, Maybe it will get us a different theme song. They, oh, them. yeah. Yeah. I can't, That's I why. can't deal with That's why they want to turn heel. <laughs> Here we go. We're the Creed. I, 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 yeah. We're the Creed. We're the Creed brothers. Yeah. The, pro- yeah, and the thing that sucks is that they're so good. Like, they're just so superhumanly strange. Yeah. It's insane. But that's and, that's like this was make this this whole thing really cool, like, too. Yeah, I feel like because it is reliving the past, but it's like the in a futuristic way because it's like, yeah, they all wear singlets and like, yeah, they're like, you know, they have a background in wrestling and uh, Gable is an Olympian, but it's like, it's not the same because he doesn't lead with being a gold medalist. You know what I mean? Like that's not yeah. the thing, but I feel like, yeah, th- this is the perfect time for all of this to happen. I feel like, I oh think God. that it's going to make all three of them more interesting and it's going to make Sammy this like gigantic baby face um, and I would be really curious to see how Gunther reacts to Gable being a bad guy because he's got to probably be like, oh, look at this. Yeah, look you at this. Is what, what I wanted to get you out of you. It. Yes. You did it. <laughs> Respect Congrats. and honor the, the mat. Yeah. You still lost, but good yeah. for you. <laughs> like, I yeah. can see him yeah. like a backhanded jab. It's like, you yeah. found your anger. Yeah. You lost, but yeah. you, like, would you like to be in part of Imperium? <laughs> And make oh. you guys can replace them. They are losers. I need perk Gable though. Like yeah. that's I I don't I don't know how to minus I, the perk. <laughs> whatever has to get him there. Okay. Well, I, I don't want anyone see. addicted to a medication, but okay. Yeah, I'm not saying let's get him addicted to perks here. Okay. I, that's why um, I said minus the perk. I just want the aggression. I don't care how you get there. I just Ruthless. want the aggression. 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 I need it. I, I need it. I'm feeding it. And God damn, that would cook. Like, that would just cook. Because he's yeah. so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, look to you. So, um, anyway, yeah, that was Raw. That was Raw. And we got NXT on right now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Great. It was a solid episode. Yeah. Oh, no. And I need to calm down about Lola Vice and whatnot. Okay. Can we raise with a shout out Limp Biscuit Patty Pitts? I... Do I look better or the same as Fred Durst? That's it's the real one question. of those days. What? Wait, no, oh, yeah. Oh, I think I listened to that song today. Uh, Everything is, everybody sucks. You don't, uh, don't want to justify. Is... justify ripping some of off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Cody is still a face company, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, I, don't I just want to tell you, I'm, we're two weeks removed from someone telling me that Cody wasn't the face of the company. So. Uh, if you don't remember it, go back and watch it. It was absolutely (laughs) iconic. Uh, it was. I wish that that we could have like filmed that conversation because so people could just hear how absurd it was. Oh, it was that was without a doubt the worst conversation we had in Philly when it came to wrestling. Uh, Yeah, and I I could sniff out the chick was a biatch from a mile away. She didn't smile in the Cody Rhodes photo, no, but she also was just nasty. She got a nasty vibe. How do you not smile in a picture with Cody Rhodes? How do you see a beautiful, bleached-haired Cody Rhodes who is so beautiful in person and very tan? Really and you're just like, a good-looking dude. I know he's like, got beautiful he's... eyes. Come on, stop it right now. He is built like a great god. I'm just yeah, kidding. He's yeah. not, but you know, he's still a good-looking dude. Obviously, there's that clip from when he was dashing. He was like, "I was voted the most." attractive male superstar in all of WWE. It's like, yes, you were. Damn right yes, you were. were. Yeah. 
But anyway. And five star raw better. That's a great way to end it here. It was a five star raw, five star raw rewind. And if you want more five star content like this, you gotta hit that subscribe button and bell notification to know every time we post and go live. Mm-hmm. For instance, we're gonna be live on Thursday. The mm-hmm. Thursday show, probably seven again. Does that work for? I you? prefer seven, but I do you... too. I, I like. Okay, it. you had been wanting to do six, so I just never changed it. No, I, I like... like I like seven now because okay. it gives me a little bit of buffer time after work. Okay, no, that's, it works better for me. So, boom! Look at that. Just all things working out. So seven o'clock on Thursday for the live show Eastern time uh, to me, and if you're in Sarah's neck of the woods. Uh, five four four. Oh, it is four. Okay, yeah. it's four. Um, because we got the the just wrestling show in general. We're talking all the hottest and breaking news going on in the business. And for all takes about that, we'll just go and follow the social media links in the description below. I posted a video promoting today's stream on my Instagram, Pitsy Thirty Five. I'll even give you the name right now, Pitsy Thirty Five. I'm doing more videos, Sarah. I, I, I saw you post a I'm picture. I'm trying to post more. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, because we, we want to get, you know, our face out there and have that flow come right back in here. And it's tough because you don't want to, but you just sometimes got to. And then the results come in. Um, so I'm doing more of that. I'm tweeting a little bit more. I'm wondering if you tweet on threads or I said tweet on threads. That's an oxymoron. But get into threads, whatever it is. Point is, all the links down there, go follow it and tell me which you use so that I can keep in contact with my peeps. And we'll see you on Thursday for the Thursday show. It's time to play some cart with the peeps and tune into NXT. So until Thursday, thank you guys for tuning in. God bless. Remember that you can do it. All you got to do is try. Oh, we got confetti. Yeah.